post it on the top. And those videos have actually inspired a lot of people to email me and say, how do these things work? Exactly what is it that makes something so simple produce such a large amount of power and heat and noise? Well, I'm going to do my best to explain how pulse jets work to you today. So bear with me and we'll see what we can discover. Now, this here, I'll just put the front on it. This is a typical pulse jet engine. Obviously, it's a bit larger than the one that we had in the long easy there, but it works on exactly the same principles. You'll notice it's pretty much a long tube. And in fact, if I take the front off, you see it's a hollow tube. You can see right through the damn thing. There's nothing in there except what you see on the outside. But the shape of the tube and the length and all those dimensions are very critical because this is how the pulse jet works. Take our engine. Let's assume the combustion chamber, which is this piece in the front, this round cylinder here in the front, let's assume that is filled with a highly combustible mixture of fuel and air. That fuel can be gasoline, propane, um, diesel, jet fuel, whatever. Anything that will burn in the presence of air. Let's assume we've filled it up with a mixture of air and fuel. And let's assume that we've got a spark plug on there and we create a spark. Boom! It ignites. That means that the gas inside here expands rapidly. It gets hot and when things get hot they expand. So suddenly there's a lot of pressure in this combustion chamber area. Now when you have a gas under pressure it tries to flow as quickly as it can to an outlet so that the pressure equalises with the air outside. In this case that flow is from the combustion chamber through the taper which actually makes it go faster down the tailpipe and out the hole at the end. Now, Isaac Newton, smart guy, he, he figured that, um, he'd look at the laws of nature, and he discovered, or observed, that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. So, just as our hot gases are racing out the tailpipe in that direction, the same amount of force is applied to the engine in that direction. So, the gases go one way, the engine tries to go the other way. That attempt to go the other way is the thrust. That's what creates the thrust or the force on the engine. So there we have it. The fuel's exploded. All the gases are rushing out the back. But what happens next? If that was it, it would simply go bang, give it a little push, and then it would stop. So how does the pulse jet continue operating? Well, that's the really interesting part about pulse jets. Now, as the hot gases rush down the tailpipe, driven by the pressure in the combustion chamber, and pushing on the front, eventually the pressure in the combustion chamber runs out because it's, all the air and fuel has been burnt. All the gases have expanded. Now suddenly, the pressure in here is the same as the pressure outside. But the gases in the tailpipe, because they have inertia, are still flowing down here very, very quickly. So this becomes what I like to think of as a, a giant syringe. In effect, the gases in the tailpipe here will act like the plunger in a syringe. They'll be going this way, pulling on the combustion chamber, or the gases in the chamber in the combustion area, and it'll create suck, it'll create a vacuum. Not a perfect vacuum, but a reduction in pressure. Now, instead of having more pressure than outside, the chamber has less pressure than outside. But these gases, because they're travelling so fast and they have a weight or a mass, they continue to travel outwards towards the tailpipe, which means that the pressure in here continues to fall. And eventually it falls so far that these little, some little valves in the front of the engine, the little valves in the front, are pushed open by the air pressure outside. The difference between the pressure outside and the pressure inside applies a force to those little valves and they open up. Now when they open up, the outside air can rush into the chamber. So it rushes in and it mixes with air, mixes with fuel. So suddenly the chamber becomes filled with fuel and air again, just like when we started. Now, of course, because these gases in the tailpipe are also subjected to that partial vacuum that we've created in the chamber, they slow down and they start to go backwards. So explosive mixture, hot gases, flame, when they meet, boom, it all starts again. So the pulse jet cycles, it's constantly sucking in the front, blowing out the back, then filling up with fuel and air, igniting again. So you get that brrr, that constant um, noise, that burping, that, that roar that pulse jets give. So there's only one moving part in this engine, and that's the little valves in the front. And they are very small light valves driven only by the air pressure from the outside of the engine. Why doesn't the hot gas rush out the front when, it when, the, when the combustion occurs? Well, because those little valves close. They are one-way valves. They only let air in. They won't let anything out. That's how the pulse jet works. Utter simplicity. And it's the simplicity that makes these engines so very, very attractive to people who want to build them. Because all you need to do is create a tube like this with the right dimensions and a valve plate like this, which is not a particularly hard job. Stick the two together 
add fuel, add air, and you've got yourself a real jet engine. Now, obviously it's not quite that simple. There are a few little things to think about. And so what I've done is I've created an e-book, an electronic book, that you can download from the website pulsejetbook.com. And inside this book, I've covered most of the basics of theory, some of the practical considerations if you're designing or building pulse jets, and I've included a lot of videos, a whole lot of plans, um, some construction articles, how to put these things together, and you can get access to this ebook and all the associated material for $32 US. Yeah, this is an infomercial. Uh, so if you go to pulsejetbook.com and you're prepared to part with $32 US, you'll get access to all this information, including plans for a whole lot of different engines. Over the next couple of days, I'm going to be uploading the plans for the engine that's on the Long Easy. So if you've got a Long Easy or you want a one, um, an engine ideal for model aircraft and proven to work in model aircraft, that's a good source of the information. I'll also be uploading the plans for an engine I'm building for the Bobcat, the Bobcat 50 ARF. So if you're thinking of putting an engine in one of those, I'll give you the plans to build it. All that's $32 US. Perpetual access, updated as regularly as I can come up with new material. So. Thanks for watching my channel. Go and check out the postjetbook.com website and I hope I'll see you again.